Rose Belmont back from your whirlwind tour of Japan. It was, I know. I went to three different cities. I went to Osaka, Kyoto, and then Tokyo. So no Akihabara for you? I, I did make a stop. Okay. Yeah, I didn't get anything too fancy, but I, I made a little stop and did some intros there and did stuff. So it was fun. Two like, weeks out. It's a long time to be away. You two weeks? Two weeks. Anything you saw over there that like, like you know, little tiny cell phones or crazy cameras or giant Hello Kitty outfits that you were like, <laughs> must bring home? There was an entire Hello Kitty store actually in Kyoto. Um, that it's like we six stopped stories by. or something, right? No, we just went to a little one. It okay. wasn't. Th there's probably a big giant one somewhere. <laughs> but I just don't understand why Americans haven't caught on to the idea of high-tech toilets. The little techno toiletlets? Well, they're not really techno. I mean, they're. I mean, they're not little. I mean, the Toto washlets and the Toto toilets are enormous, and they do all sorts of crazy things. The air dry is a little expensive. disturbing. If you hit the wrong, if you're in a Japanese hotel and nothing's in English and well, you hit got, the wrong button, <laughs> they've got a button that says like for ladies, and then they've got like the regular style washing and the drying and the heated seats, and it plays music. You can put say, music yeah. on an SD card. The fancy ones have an SD card slot. What? So you sit down and it starts playing Journey for you or something? Whatever you want. <laughs> if you want to go to the bathroom to Journey, that is your prerogative, but you can do it. Did you bring home? One of these mystical, magical Japanese no. toilet seats. For the airlines you and charge Ryan. so much for that extra overweight, like boxes and it stuff. It would have been way too expensive. Yikes. No, I didn't bring one. I didn't bring one. Someday, maybe I'll get one. Someday, she bought maybe. One. She's just I not did not. Admit it. The one, I, the, the fanciest one I saw was like four thousand dollars. Did you add it to like GDGT? <laughs> to get your gadget on? <laughs> I gotta you get add him to there. make a, a bathroom gadget category. That's next in the database, Ryan, bathroom gadgets. The Wi-Fi Alliance has announced a new format for transferring data up to 10, 10 times faster than Wi-Fi N. The rather unfortunately named Y-Gig represents the Wi-Fi Alliance's next move towards cutting the gigabit Ethernet cable. They'll be working with the Wireless Gigabit Alliance, big shock, and vendors like Linksys and Netgear and pretty much everybody else to build Y-Gig hardware. Y-Gig speed comes as a pretty serious price range. It is doubtful mm -hmm. that a single Y-Gig hotspot could cover an entire f house says Wi-Fi Alliance reps. No surprise given it runs on 60 gigahertz spectrum. That's a higher frequency than a techno toilet. I'm telling you. That's, I love that you call them techno toilets. I, I think you're the like, first person I've ever heard call them that. It has something to do with the fact that like the first time I and only time I went to Japan was right about the time I was exposed to Wallace and Gromit. So there's like oh. techno trousers, X NASA and Japanese I techno see. toilet. Yeah, I can understand how that happened. Yeah, 60 gigahertz spectrum, which is a lot shorter of a wavelength than 2.4 gigahertz, which means it's not going to go through walls and floors very well. But we're talking about seven gigabits per second. I don't know if that's practical or theoretical, but that would be really nice for scooting HD video around your home network and doing whole drive backups around the house. I guess you could just get a bunch of repeaters or something. I think I'm just going to end up, maybe I'll end up with the gigabit Ethernet feeding the little Y gig yeah. routers. Interesting. I don't know. We'll see. If you're thinking of upgrading, you probably won't want to wait. Then the new networking spec isn't expected to hit the street for at least two years. Two years. So having Dell, Cisco, and just about everybody else on the board of directors will help speed things along. Remember yes. how fast N came along? Yeah. I'm thinking they're trying to avoid another N debacle. Well, I want it. I want to test it out. You I wonder want if we faster. can maybe we can get a get an early look at it somehow. You want to network your toilet with HD video. That's all you're going to talk about today, isn't <laughs> Pretty it? Pretty much. That's what I figured. Well, we love eBooks, and Borders will be bringing the $150 Kobo online in June. They're taking pre-orders for the device with a six-inch e-ink screen now. It's kind of like Sony's Basic Reader. There's no built-in 3G for adding new books anywhere, unfortunately. Um, which brings us to Google's claims that they have almost all U.S. publishers for the digital bookstore they plan to launch as early as June. It's something like 25,000 authors and publishers that have signed up. Yeah, apparently Google went, hey, we've got billions of dollars in the bank. Let's make everybody part of our store. And why not? Uh, Google Editions yeah. is the current name of the new service, and it's almost certain that publishers will decide the retail price for their books, which is, I think that's fair. It'll be interesting. Well, one yeah. of the things that you could argue back and forth, right, is Amazon used the Amazon stick right. to bring publishers to their pricing format. So mm -hmm. it'll be interesting to see if 
you know, vendors start abandoning the Kindle platform in exchange for right. Google. It's it'll be ebooks. There was a new uh, Kindle Paywall. update while I was gone. Actually, I haven't updated to it yet. It's 2.5 update. The I think. Social one. Yeah, and you get to have categories <laughs> and like basically folders for all your books. Oh, I'm that's really a good looking thing. forward to that because I have so many books still on my As Kindle. You're scrolling like 42 well, pages to find. I have one it. Thing I have it organized by the most recently opened okay. or most recent use. So it's not that hard to find stuff that I'm actively reading. Is it like? Facebook's links in there? I haven't looked yet. I haven't updated it. So I have to, it doesn't let you download the update from the internet. And while I was away, I was downloading <laughs> books and using the um, USB cable right. to transfer the books over. But they don't let you do that for the update. It has to, they have to push it wirelessly over the 3G. Which, of course, wasn't working for you in Japan. No, I tried. I was like, maybe I'll just try. I'll see if, I don't know why I thought maybe it would work. Like, I know it's US only. I right. know it wouldn't be available anywhere. But I was like, to dream. Yeah. See what happens, maybe. Maybe there's something I don't know. Can't hurt to just turn it on for a second. Worst case scenario? Absolutely nothing happened. Aww. Oh well. Meanwhile, the MPD group claims that Android smartphones are outselling iPhones Ooh. with 28% of the market to Apple's 21%, but BlackBerry still rules the roost. That's the uh, RIM company with 36% of the market. That's uh, nbt.com slash plus slash releases slash whatever you want to go to. <laughs> Basically, you can read their numbers. It's yeah. pretty interesting. Though. Now, that's all Android sales combined, including mm -hmm. Verizon's Droid with its $100 million advertising budget. So they that's got a impressive. nice push from that, I would say. And, of course, you can only get iPhone on at and while Android phones are just about everywhere. The NPD reports that AT&T has 32% of the smartphone market, Verizon has 30%, T-Mobile has 17%, and Sprint's got that leftover 15%. At least until this summer. <laughs> yeah. Um, just thought you'd like to know, and, and before any Apple fans write in about the Comscore numbers that put Android at 10% of the smartphone market, um, tip of the hat to all things D. NPD is measuring new sales, while Comscore is measuring the existing user base. Yeah, Android is, is is having a great quarter, but it's still playing catch up to the iPhone platform. Mm -hmm. It's going to be fun to see what happens this summer when Sprint's HTC Evo 4G and the new iPhone come out. I think the numbers are going to go all over the place. I just realized I was talking that whole time with like a big hunk of hair in my mouth like this. Sometimes it gets stuck to your lip gloss and you just, I know you have this problem all the time <laughs> when, when the hair gets stuck to your lip gloss. Yeah.